So let's start. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome for all the Zoom presentation uh, with Benjamin. So Benjamin Henry is the, the head coach of Paris Saint-Germain Academy worldwide. Uh, he's with, uh, with the club for, for more than 10 years now. Uh, thank you, Benjamin, for being with thank us Thank you for today. having me, Cyril. And, I'm, uh, I'm excited to be here. It will be a, a, a great presentation. For, uh, over the last 10 years in the club, uh, Ben met, met uh, a lot of young players. Some of them became professional, some of them faced some difficulties or so he knows exactly what uh, what a player need to, to to achieve his dreams and to to become a, a high level player exactly all good thank you yeah great thank you cyril for inviting me uh pg academy qatar it's always a an honor when i come over to visit you sadly because of this pandemic i can't come this season so uh, I'm happy to talk over Zoom. Today, we're going to talk about the requirements for high performance elite football. So I'm going to share my, my screen with you and we're going to go through it. So my name is, my name is Benjamin Uri. I've been at the club for, like Cyril said, for 11 seasons now. And during these 11 seasons, I've coached all the age groups from the very young ones to the older ones, so I know the difference between the players that made it to professional level, level and the other players that sadly could not make it. So today we're going to talk about how you, a soccer school PSG player in Qatar, can do everything possible they can to become the best versions of yourself. Okay, so I'm going to go through all the slides and then afterwards we can go through as many questions as as you want, we have plenty of time to go through uh, questions in details. Okay, so we're going to talk about the invisible work. What is invisible work? The mindset you need to make it at the highest level possible. A specific case study of a player that all of you know. Your homework, how you can do your homework to make yourself a better football player and the most important aspect of everything I'm going to talk today. Okay, so the invisible work is all the life, the lifestyle choices you do outside of the training ground that can make you a better player or reduce your performance. So the most important actions you can control as a youth footballer is your sleep, the, your nutrition and your hydration and all the medical care. Okay, so Sleep, okay, is extremely important to make yourself a better football player, okay? So a young football player has to sleep between 8 and 10 hours a day at night, of course, okay? Ideally, sleep in a total dark and silent room, okay? It's going to make your sleep much, much more productive. So it's not only the amount of sleep you do, it's the quality of it. I know it's hard to follow, but no screens, no computer games, 90 minutes before going to bed. I know it's hard for many of you, but if you play computer games too close to sleep, it's going to affect the quality and the time you take to fall asleep. Short recovery nap, so 20 minutes recovery sleep after training session is good for your performance. So. If mommy and daddy says you're lazy because you're sleeping 20 minutes after training, you say no. Coach Ben said it's important. No soda drinks before going to bed because soda drinks have some caffeine in it. Caffeine is what your mom and dad drink in coffee and it can stimulate you so you don't fall asleep. Go to bed and wake up at the same time each day and even on the weekends. So your body gets used to waking up and falling asleep at the same time every day. That's what all the professional players do. Even on the weekends, they go to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time. Of course, when PSG players have a, a game late at night, they go to bed much later. But ideally, 
wake up and go to bed at the same time. If you're stressing because of a football game or because of exams, try relaxation techniques before going to bed, such as yoga or meditation. Okay, so quickly we went through sleep that you can control to make yourself a better player. Very, very important. Now, nutrition and hydration, okay? As an athlete, what you put in your body is your fuel. So you're like a car with some petrol. As a footballer, your body is your, is your work. So what you put in it is very, very important and it's gonna have a big impact on your performance. So what's important when football players talk about nutrition and hydration? So here, the picture, can everybody see the picture on the, on the presentation? It's PSG's changing rooms for after a football game, okay? So that one is for just before. So they have some quick food, banana fruit that they can eat to have quick energy before playing. Of course, as you can see on the left, there's always, always water. So now we're gonna talk what you have to do with your nutrition and hydration. Always carry a bottle of you to class at school and that training ground. Always, always, even myself, I'm not a player anymore. I always carry a bottle of water with me. Don't wait to be thirsty to drink. If you're drinking when you're thirsty, that means you're already dehydrated. Dehydrated is means that your body needs water, it needs water. Reduce soda drinks, so Coca-Cola, Pepsi, all of these, they don't make you a better footballer because there's extra, extra added stuff in it that's going to not make your body the best possible. When hungry, you eat. When you stop, you're full. Okay, so don't overeat or don't undereat. And you have to eat all different kinds of different foods. Okay, so there's no bad or good food. You always have to have common sense and eat fresh food and as much different colors as possible on your plate. Very important. Chew your food. So when you're eating with your family, take your time to eat because it's very important that you digest what you eat so that it can go into your muscles, into everything to make you full your performance. Protein at each meal and snacks, okay? So protein, it can be some eggs, it can be some chicken, some beef, uh, or a, or a specific chocolate bar, all the time, protein at each meal and snacks. Eat food that you enjoy, very important, because even the footballers, Mbappes, all of them, every time they eat, it's, they have to enjoy it, okay? Food is always um, a social event, so make sure that it's food that you enjoy. Never skip breakfast, okay? All of you, I know, in Qatar have a busy life with school, training, other activities in the morning, never skip breakfast. And remember, there's no forbidden food, everything in moderation. Even the professional players, sometimes after a big game, they have a pizza, they have five guys, they have something because food in moderation, nothing is bad. Okay, so we went through nutrition and hydration. Remember, if you have questions afterwards, I would love to answer them. Now, medical care, okay? Injuries will slow down your progression, okay? I'm sure everybody, there's many, many of you online today, all of you have already had an injury. It can be joints, muscles, whatever. You've all had injuries, and it's never good for a footballer because when you're injured, the other players progress, you don't progress and you can't achieve the highest potential level. So you have to do everything possible to control your risk of being injured, okay? So you have to listen to your body. If you feel sore somewhere, if you, something feels different, you have to listen to your body and maybe do a little less, okay? Take care of every sore injury, okay? Go to the doctors, okay? And respect the decision of the doctor. If the coach or the doctor says, okay, two weeks, no football. Okay, believe me, because a lot of young footballers don't follow that advice and they will regret it afterwards. Listen to the doctors, relax for two weeks and you'll be better when you come back. Okay, many players at PSG that sadly, you, you don't know the names because they've not made it as a superstar, 
they were injured and they said, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. They played, they played. The injury gets worse. And when you're 16, 17, 18, the body um, can't, can't play anymore, okay? Hygiene is essential, okay? Your hygiene, okay, your foot care, shower after every training sessions, washing your hands, even now more important than ever. All of this is the job of a professional player. Okay, okay, we talked about the invisible work. Now we're going to talk how you, your body, your mind has to do now to be the most efficient footballer possible. Okay, high performance requires a strong mindset. You need self-confidence. We're going to talk about the will to improve your work ethic and your leadership skills. Okay. So self-confidence. Always remember that football is an opinion sport. Even the best players in the world get criticism and experience self-doubt. When I say that football is an opinion sport, it's because one coach can say you're a very good player. Someone else can say you're not. And there's no good or right answer. Okay, It's not like a 100-meter sprint. The fastest player wins. The fastest players get the medal. Football, there's so many different aspects that you're always going to get criticism and experience self-doubt. To make it to the top level, you must be ready to be criticised, but be extremely self-confident to bounce back. All the best players, okay, even Mbappé when he was young, some coaches were not at PSG, well, you don't score enough goals, you don't score enough goals, and he had self-confidence to improve, to improve, and to, uh, to work on that. If you don't believe in yourself, guys, to be totally honest, no one can do it for you. Even the best coaches at the soccer school in Qatar, even if they think you're the best player, if you think you have a lot of potential, if you don't believe in yourself, no one can do it for you, okay? Very important that I tell every player, self-confidence match day tip. In a game, okay, we all players do mistakes, okay? Mistakes can make your self-confidence go a little down. So when your self-confidence goes down, your improvement can be a bit more reduced. The tip I told all the players is when something is going bad in the game, do everything you can to do easy stuff. Okay, so imagine you lose the ball, you lose the ball. Okay, after that, simple pass, simple pass, simple pass to build back your confidence and then take more risks. Okay, so you can be a midfielder after a few mistakes, maybe when you have the ball, pass the ball to your defenders a few times, get your confidence back, forget, put your mindset focused on the game and then take more risks, okay? Very important as well, guys. I know a PSG Academy coach will never criticise you, never. The only negative feedback is to make you a better player. So you have to be open for negative feedback to become a better football, footballer, a better at school, everything. It, it's not negative to be negative, okay? Also, the mindset of top, top level footballers is the will to improve. Will to improve, that means you have to be willing to progress at each and single training session. Every time you're training at PSG Academy, you have to be in the mood, ready to progress a little bit more. Even if it's, let's say you're in a group that train twice a week, okay? That's 70 sessions a week, uh, a year, sorry. If every session, you, when you get ready to go to training, say, I'm going to progress 1% today. At the end of the year, so you join in September, in June, you can be 70% better, okay? If you do that for two years, you're twice as good as you were the, the time before. And to be totally honest with you, that's the only way you can make it to the high level football is Mbappé, every time, he's, he's the best player in the world, every time he goes to the training ground, 
he's like, today I want to improve on my headers or my left foot, everything to become better. When you are a professional footballer, you can't improve 1% each time, but because it gets harder, the better you are. But you have to always be in a mindset to be in a w willing to improve, okay? Work ethic, super important, okay? To be the best, you must be the hardest and smartest working player on the training ground, okay? I'm sure you know, guys, Everybody wants to be a professional player. And there's a lot, a lot of kids that want to do it. Not all of you can. It's the guys, it's the players, the girls, the boys that every time they're on the pitch, they want to work hard. Okay. So me, Cyril, all the coaches at PSG Academy in Qatar know that the best players are the ones that arrive at the training, the first ones. They're never late. They don't expect the driver, the mom and dad, to make sure they arrive on time. They're mature footballers, they arrive on time. And they leave the last. They, they, they can maybe ask a question to the coach or maybe stretch after the train, training session. This, you, you have to be so honoured and happy to be at the training ground that you're never late because you want to work harder than everybody else. Even though... I'm saying you have to be the hardest working in the women. You have to work for the team. Because football is a team sport. In your team, there's maybe 22 players. All of them are important. And as a coach, we know that the guys we want to make them help them go to the highest level possible is the ones that are going to be ready to work for the team. Okay? You have to listen to the coach's feedback. Makes sense, but listen, there's two types of listening. There's just listening to be polite because all of you are polite individuals, but the top level, the high level players, they listen in detail to what the coaches are saying because you're so lucky. And I know PSG Academy Qatar very well that you have experienced coaches. All the little details are going to make you improve. All the details are going to make you improve to become a better player. Enjoy the training session, okay? Make for sure you have to enjoy it because you can only progress that stuff you enjoy in and never cheat. When I say never cheat, it means if the coach says, do this five times, do it five times. Sprint, sprint, never cheat because cheaters maybe win in the short term, but they can never make it to the professional level. Never, it's never happened before, okay? Leadership. Now, all of you, all of you have a different style of leadership. You have to find it to become the best player possible, okay? So, high-performance players have na are natural leaders. All the Mbappes, Kipembes, all of them, Neymar, they're leaders, okay? They're two types. There's technical leaders, leaders that... By the technical ability, they can lead the team to win or to play better. And there's the work leaders. Work leaders are the players that encourage everybody to work harder. Okay, they, they may be the ones that in the changing rooms gather everybody up, give a good ambiance. Okay, they're very important to make it to the top level. You, you can be an introvert, introvert. In English, it means someone that is quite reserved, likes to be on his own, but you have, still have to use it as a leadership style and you can't be shy on the football pitch. No football players, even maybe you think some goalkeepers that don't talk a lot, they, they can't make it at the top, top level. You have to be outgoing, speak, even if inside of you, you are a shy person. On the football pitch, you can't, okay? Both leadership styles have one aspect in common. All of them have one thing in common, is that they're all behaviour leaders. The technical leaders and the work leaders are all behaviour leaders, okay? That means you have to influence your teammates to behave in a professional manner, okay? As coaches, we need players like this that can, because as a coach, I can't look at the 22 players at once. So I need 
to count on players that can up the behavior of my team. Preparation, very important guys that all of you, I know there's different age groups that are listening to this talk, but at high performance level, all the players have a pre-game routine to get mentally ready for, for the game. Okay, so before a game, you have to do everything possible to arrive at the stadium physically and mentally ready to play at your best. Okay, at elite level, you can't expect your parents or anyone else to organize your football life. So you have to prepare your football equipment, your shin guards, your boots, everything, your water bottle, your pre-game meal, what you're going to eat before the meal. You can't expect someone to manage that for you and your personal habits. Some personal habits can be what do you put in your bag, what kind of uh, socks you want to wear under your football socks, whatever little habits that's going to build your confidence up, okay? Uh, I know plenty of players that have different, sometimes a bit weird pre-game um, habits that can make them ready to play. But Cyril, me, all top coaches, by looking in someone's football bag, we know if someone is ready to make it at the top, top level. You have to take every training, every match seriously in the preparation, okay? Case study, now we're going to talk. Uh, I can see a bit of cameras. Hands up if you know Kipembe. Show me hands up, yeah? Two hands up. Oh, a lot of hands up. Okay, guys. So, great. A lot of hands. Good hands. Good hands. So, Kipembe is a great example of the perfect professional player. Since he's been at the PSG, since he was very young, there was a lot of players as talented as him, okay? I had him when he was under 17, okay? Captain of the, of the, of the team. Always, at every training session, he's here, he's happy, he's energised. He used to always put the music on in the changing rooms. Happy to be here and focused to progress at every training session, okay? Every age group under 12s, I'm going to progress 70%. Under 15, 70%. 70%. Sometimes maybe an injury, a bit less. Sometimes a bit... A great year, a bit more, but after eight years of constantly putting in the work, being happy to be here, preparation amazingly, when all the guys are maybe playing PlayStation, he's in bed, sleeping, eating good. What happens? Seven years after, he wins the World Cup with Mbappé. And there's plenty, plenty of defenders like him at his age group, but he's he knows why he wants to be a professional footballer because all the guys that want to make it professional, a lot of you, a lot of players just want to be professional because it's the cool thing to do. But if that's the only motivation, it's not going to happen. It has to be, I know I want to improve today because if I don't improve at the end of the session, it's going to be hard for me to make it at the top level. Now, the most important aspect of high-level football is the one I'm going to say now, guys. It's playing football versus doing football, okay? Everybody, we play football. Even Champions League, World Cup, no one says, oh, today I'm going to do football. You do your homework, okay? I know everybody loves doing their homework and you play football, this is a big difference. Even when you're going to grow up, some games are going to be more important, maybe more stress, you have to always, always remember that you're playing football, okay? You're not just doing football, because if you get into that mentality, even when you're 16, 17, 18, 20, you're not going to be able to become the best version of yourself, because if you're you're doing the dishes, you don't play the dishes, but we're lucky enough to play football and that's the best thing and the, like, that we like to do. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, but this is the most important aspect and all the 
the best players, the Neymars, you see them, they're always dancing, always smiling, keep Mbappé, Mbappé, they're always happy because they're playing football. Okay, now the homework that I want you to focus on, okay, all of the stuff that can make you the best versions of yourself, okay, let's talk about nutrition again. Remember, eat all kinds of different foods, colourful foods, green, orange, all different colours, the more colours, the better, okay, take care of your recovery kids, okay, if you're sore, rest if the doctor says something listen and recover but very important even at a young age because when you're young you think you can play you can play you can play you can play nothing happens a lot of players have done that mistake and are not playing anymore so take care of your recovery sleep nine hours per night okay so think about what time you're going to go to bed tonight and what time you're going to wake up try and get between eight and ten hours per night and go to bed at the same time every day, like it's your job, okay? It's gonna make you a better player, it's gonna make you smarter, sharper at school and at football, okay? I said, be aware of any injuries, listen to your body, work to improve at each training session. Every training session, ask at the end of the training session, hey coach, what can I do at the next training session to improve? They're gonna have some very specific answer to all of you here. Okay, pay attention to the coach's feedback. Okay, good, good. Why is it good? Listen, it's very important. Focus on your weaknesses, yes, but also improve, improve on your strengths. All the top levels players have one quality that is above everybody else. Okay, Neymar, what's his top quality? He's technically the best. Mbappé, he has a lot, but he's very fast with the ball. Everybody has one top quality. What is yours? Maybe write it down and think about it and improve on it and improve on it, okay? Be okay to criticism, okay? So at top level football, some people can maybe be friends, whatever, can say you don't deserve to be here, you're not good enough. Be okay with it, but have self-confidence that you don't care what they say. Because as I said, um, a 100 meter sprint, uh, Usain Bolt, no one says, hey, you're too slow to win the Olympics because he's the fastest, he wins. No debate. At football, even the best players that all of you know, some people thought they were not good enough. Some people said they were never going to make it professional. So you can't, that's the magic of football is that it's a debate sport. Everybody talks who's good, who's not good, okay? Get mentally prepared before every game, okay? The coaches say we meet on Sunday at 8 o'clock in the morning. You have to, on Saturday, prepare your bag. Prepare what time you're going to wake up, what you're going to have for breakfast. This is the professional way of playing football. Get ready to always, always have fun. If you don't have fun, you can keep playing, you can keep doing football, doing football, but you're never going to be able to make it at, at the top because the guys that are having fun, they progress easier and it's more fluid for them to get better and you're going to miss the train. So always, you arrive at the training session, always smile, have fun, be ready to improve. That's all for me, guys. Um, it was short way of how to make it at the highest level possible. Um, and now it's in the questions that I can help you the most to a specific way of making it to, uh, to the top level. All right, well, thank you so much, Benjamin. This was very informative. I hope you guys took into account everything that he said, you know, to become a better player and to reach your full potential. Um, if you guys have any questions for Benjamin, don't hesitate, just raise your hand and we'll select a few of you. And then we'll have some questions on our side as well. So, um, you- Go, Youssef. Youssef. Go. One second, Youssef. Um, so before training on the day on training, 
what would you recommend the best way to get prepared before uh, a training or a game? Great question, Youssef. So I imagine you have school before the training. So you have a lot of stuff going on in your life before in the morning or even the night before you have to prepare your football bag. You have to not think about, am I going to forget something, whatever. An hour and a half before the, the training, ideally. So if the training is at four o'clock and you can have a little snack at three o'clock, one hour and a half before, eat something healthy that's going to make you fill your training session before. But So all the bag, all the boring stuff, but very important before, snack one hour and a half before and after the training session. So we talked about preparation, eat a healthy meal to recover and go to bed when you can. All right, so do we have anybody else who's willing to ask any questions to Ben? Go ahead, raise your hands guys, anyone? All right, so we have a question on our side. Benjamin, we have a lot yes. of players when they're younger, they're extremely talented, right? But they don't necessarily make it to the pros, whereas the hard workers are the ones that make it. Can you explain exactly. a little more about that? For sure, Yannick. So th the thing is, is that a lot of players, they peak very early. So at under 12, 13, they're much better than everybody else. Okay, good. Okay, coaches, we can see that, but... If they don't continue to work hard, all the other players are going to catch up, are going to catch up, and then they're going to reach at the same level. And if that famous player that peaked early is not progressing as well, the other guys go past him. So is everybody is going to be at the best at different ages. Some players, professional, at the best when they're 21. Some players at the best when they're 29, 30, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's about always being in the competitive mood to progress, okay? So whatever, whatever level you're at, you have to be ready to progress so that your time will be at your peak. So when you mix hard work and talent, that's pretty much unmatchable, right? Unmatchable, of course, okay? We're all grown-ups here. To make it at a, as a professional player, you need talent. But what is the definition of talent? No one exactly knows. And again, football is a sport of opinion. Okay? Uh, in athletics, everybody knows who's the most talented. It's the person that has got the fastest time. At football, a goalkeeper has a different talent than a striker. Okay? So... Make sure that, yes, you have to have a kind of talent that is unique to yours, but if the, work, the hard work doesn't follow it, there's no, not a chance. Okay, all right. Thank you, Ben. Um, we have a question from Ahmad. Ahmad al -Hajim. One second. I just wanted to ask, why is the, uh, uh, why do, why do we like, why is like you know, the sleeping like nine to ten hours useful for like before training or in like for a match? And also like for why do you want us to get like is uh, uh, hydration really important like before training or something like that? Great question. So let's talk about sleep. Why is Coach Ben saying sleep, sleep, sleep? I hate sleep. I could be playing video games. I could do plenty of stuff. I was the same when I was your age. But when you sleep, okay, all your body, okay is recovering so when you sleep you're not focusing on stuff your muscles can recover your mind is everything you learned at school and on the training ground gets printed in your head while you sleep so when you're you're completely completely well alert after a good night's sleep your mind is very very sharp okay so physically your body feels better Okay, hands up if any of you played football on the weekend after sleeping very little. Show me your hands up. Yeah, okay, one on this, two, three, okay, yeah. We all have, it feels horrible. You feel slow, you feel like there's a cloud and it's not fun. So 
sleeping is you the older you get the more you understand but the if if i could say that to every young kid from 6 to 14 sleep more and they do it they'll be better football players everywhere in the world because it's underrated and it's important now hydrations i finished a bottle of water in one hour and a half your body is 70 percent water so if this is a hundred percent your body is all of this is water that means thank you you're drinking good 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 um in in one hour a footballer always has a bottle of water with them sometimes a portable one in one hour you sip you have to sip a little bit a little bit because your body 70 percent water your muscles is water your brain is water it's the most important aspect and you're very lucky to have a lot of sun in your country it's even more important to to drink a lot of water all right so you heard how important hydration is especially in high level sports and in general all right so um ben we have a question in the chat um, how do I yeah. prepare myself? It's, this is from Adam. How do I prepare myself for football mentally well when I have stress from school? Great. Adam, where are you? Wave so I can see you. Is he here? Adam, where are you? I can't see. Adam, so, Yanni, can you say the question again? So, how so, can you... Yeah, how do I prepare myself for football mentally well when I have stress from school? Good question, Adam. That's very smart of you because stress gets mixed up, okay? If you have stress of exams plus stress of football, sadly, you can't go on the football pitch and forget the school, forget the exams. It's very hard to do. Sometimes when you're playing good and, and the football is going great, you, you get into a flow state where everything feels slow and the, you forget everything, but before it's impossible to go okay i'm stressed because of school not football how can i prepare so you're gonna have to just try and separate both and say hey football is what i love to do this is what i love to i, I play football i don't do football and like i said again i do my homework i go to school and football is my hour and a half of the day where it's my time and I try and figure everything but the, the preparation before is going to be is going to be hard and just always focus at at football it's your time to take away everything you can and enjoy it of course for a game if there's pressure for a game it's going to be it's going to be hard as well but for training oof, relax and have fun but again even a game at PSG Academy and at top level football, if you do mistakes, it's okay. Everybody does mistakes on the football pitch. The, the players that do no mistake in that game is the ones that were hiding on the side and didn't do anything. We as coaches love to see a player that does a big mistake. And the second after his mistake, he shows everybody he can get back into the game. He's confident and, and he's fine because everybody does mistakes, okay? I, I was watching um, France last night. There was plenty of mistakes of the top players because that's what football, no one, and even at, in life, everybody does mistakes. And the top players, the ones that us coaches we want is the ones that can quickly after a mistake, forget it and get back on. Um, we have a question um, from Karim actually uh, regarding leadership. So. Um, actually, this is from Emmanuel, sorry. Uh, what's a player supposed to do if the other teammates don't listen to him? Or Ooh, yeah. Emmanuel, G good, good question. If the players don't listen to, to you, um, you're going to have to just prove it by actions. So wait, the captain that we choose at PSG is not more the, often the guy that's going to be listened to on the bus going to the game or in the changing rooms is going to be the player that all the players look up to in a game. When time is hard, when the training is hard, 
who's the the player that's everybody going to look up to? So when Emmanuel says they don't listen to me, they don't have they don't have to li listen to you. You're, you're not the teacher. You're not the coach. They're just going to have to follow your actions. So if you're working very hard, or the team, even if they don't listen to you, they're going to have to work hard to to step it up. If you're playing very well, you're passing the ball, you're moving the ball fast, they're not going to listen to you. They're going to just copy your actions and then you become the leader. And then the, the coach is going to give you the captain because he can just see because the PSG Academy coaches are very smart. They, can, they don't care if no one listens to you in the changing rooms, if your jokes are not funny. We don't care about that. We want to know who are the coach, who are the players following and not listening if you can understand the difference. And this is actually a question for you, Ben. Um, yeah. So Adam, help me. Uh, how do you feel achieving this coaching career? How do I achieve? Uh, how do you, how do you feel? Exactly. Like, yeah, how do you feel achieving this coaching career? Uh, exactly like if I, if I was a, a football player, meaning I started at PSG when I was 18 and I just wanted to become a better coach after every training session. So when you're a coach, you don't, if you're a footballer, you work, let's say one hour and a half, twice a week, three times a week at your age. When I was an 18 year old coach, I started at 15. I could, I could work as many hours as I could. I, I wanted to, every time I read the book, every time I was watching football coaching, I could improve 1%, 1%. And because I work at PhD where I was full of, all top top level coaches i could listen work hard work hard listen listen to become the best so that's how i think of my coaching career just every time i can improve i can improve and because a lot of footballers when they're 30 years old they start or maybe let's say 35 they start improving less luckily me i'm soon 30 when i'm 40 i can improve and i'm 50 i can improve so always being in a mindset of becoming the best possible. Okay. And uh, regarding the professionals, um, yeah. how do they train leading up to a game exactly? Like what's their regimen? What do they do? What do they eat? You know, what's their training Excellent like? question. So let's say PSG, of, uh, PSG are playing Bayern de Munich next Wednesday. Okay. So let's go through the week. So today, Everybody's in a national team. They're going to fly back. They're going to do airplane, sleeping, recovery, a lot of eating good food, sleeping a lot, drinking a lot of water. Friday, they're going to be training. Saturday, PSG have a game against Lille, so a big game. Let's talk about the week following that. Sunday, they're going to recover. They're going to go back to train to recover. So recovery is so important that after a game, they're going to all meet up and recover together because on the, on the Wednesday, they have a big, big game against Bayern de Munich that PSG are going to win. Wednesday, um, Monday, training. Tuesday, light training because you can't always train high, 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 high level. You're going to, sometimes you train hard, sometimes you train slow, but more, always you train smart. Okay, and then let's talk about Tuesday night. So I don't know if the game's on Tuesday or Wednesday, but the day before the game, okay, all the players are going to eat together. So on the presentation, I showed you a picture of all the players having fun eating together. Okay, they're going to eat a healthy meal with plenty of colors, plenty of different foods, but they're going to have fun and it's going to be foods they like. Very important because it's their job. They're going to have to do something that they can keep doing for the whole life. So they're going to eat a meal that all of them like together, have fun. They're going to go to bed early, earlier than you think, okay? They're going to turn off the lights early. They're going to read a book. They're no one is going to be allowed to play PlayStation the night before the game after 10 o'clock. Impossible. I know some of you do it. And when I, when I go to Qatar and I can see your see some people tired when I saw a game on the Sunday I know who stayed up late or not I can see it they're not allowed to do that before a big game 
that they they wake up not too late because every like I said you go to bed at the same time you wake up at the same time because if you wake up later or earlier you get confused so they wake up at the same time they have breakfast together and then the coach okay you know is going to bring everybody together and they're going to talk about the game so keep them be okay or navas okay today blah 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 big game this is what I want you to do keep them be this is what I want you to do everybody's going to have a personal chat with the coach collectively chat then they're going to eat again lunch and then they're going to go for a nap like i said naps are very good for recovery during those naps some of them are going to be allowed to play a bit of playstation to relax they can play cards relax have a snack before the game okay for 3 hours before the game changing room get ready all of them are going to have some secret preparation so some of them can be before the game i know some players they brush their teeth before the game because they feel fresh they feel light some of them have a mouth mouth wash before the the game some of them they listen to a specific song everybody has their little specific thing and then they go in the changing rooms and they do what they like the most meaning they play football even the the big games where there's a lot of money involved a lot of pressure they're going to play football they're going to have fun they're going to shake the hands of the other players because it's a it's a it's a sport it's a game and then the best team will win awesome so we also have a question from uh, Nabil Tay so he's asking does watching some videos help improve and how can you master skills that you feel horrible at excellent so nabil does watching youtube videos improve as a footballer or watching tiktok videos of neymar no it's not going to make you a, a better footballer uh, these freestyle videos no but watching pg uh against Bayern de Munich but well, it's it's late for you in Qatar so maybe watch it the following day but watching a full game 90 minutes watching it with tactical eyes does help you become a better player okay um this is for sure um watching if if you're not playing for for the academy one weekend and you go and watch the other teams play it's going to make you a better footballer everything eating sleeping breathing football is going to make you a better player for sure second question how do you master a skill repetition so uh, if you're not good at headers okay you're not going to do 25 minutes of headers at PSG academy because we have a specific program to make you a better player tactically everything but maybe at home if you have space okay don't tell your your mom and dad i said that but maybe with a tennis ball you can start doing headers repetition maybe start passing the ball against the wall with your left foot for 20 minutes only your left foot left foot that's going to make you a better player then of course if it's a specific um technical or tactical thing you're going to need the help of your coach and don't be shy to ask Cyril or the other coaches hey coach how can i improve that specific thing of football okay so we have another question from uh, dahir um is it too late to become a professional footballer if you have not joined a professional club by 16 years old no not a, not at all um there's there's plenty of examples of players that were playing semi professional football player uh, football at 21 they made it professional um because I, I i answered the question a bit before they're next saying that every player peaks at a different level of course right, right. if you if you're playing if you're playing only with your friends at the park and you peak at 25 it's going to be too late but if you're 16 you're progressing at the youth at the PSG academy you progressing you progressing your progression you 17 18 people are going to are going to see you in Qatar and then they can see you outside of Qatar then they can see you on the TV but if you're progressing whatever age you can you can uh 
you can make it professional. Okay, before before you're 21, there is plenty of chances to make it professional, not by being in a professional club. Okay, okay? if again you're you're in the mood for progression. Okay. okay. So we have another question from Emmanuel, and yeah. uh, he's asking. How does pro players like Neymar maintain their performance while being horrifically injured all the time? Good question. Uh, at PSG, we're so lucky, and there's a partnership with with uh, Qatar, with Aspire, that the medical care is the best in the world. The best. Uh, if I had Neymar's injuries with my weak body, I would I would not walk again my whole life. But PSG have such good medical care that they can get badly injured and get back to, to top, top level. So that's why I know I can only speak for PSG today that players get badly injured and get back to, to top level. But they do it because what we talked about, all the invisible work, they do it. It's no secret. Meaning, imagine Neymar's injured. He spends three hours with the doctors and with the, the, the coaches. They work hard, they work hard, good. But then there's 21 hours in a day that are going to count to make him recover and be the best. So when the doctors say, okay, bye-bye, see you tomorrow, when he's injured, he's not outside playing football in the streets or doing whatever, he's at home. Drinking a lot because to answer another question, drinking helps you with your recovery. He's eating good food to help you recover. He's sleeping a lot. He's stretching at home. It's his job. And that's why it can work because PSG have the best medical staff and because he takes it seriously. And another question is, at what age should um, young players start their strength and conditioning uh, training? Good question. Um, body weight exercises, so doing some push ups, whatever, it's good to do it only with your coaches when you're, when you're young. Okay, so a specific age, I can't answer because it depends on your, on your, on your physique at an age, because at 12 year old, some players can be very big. And they, they, they can maybe do it some and maybe um, younger of size and won't do it. So there's no specific age, but before you're 14, 15, let's say 16, always do it with your coach at the academy. Okay, so it can maybe be an extra 10 minutes before the session. You do some push ups, you do some squats. Before 16, always within the academy. Then and afterwards, maybe some extra work because you can maybe have a weak back or weak hamstrings and you can do it. But before 16, always inside the soccer school. If coach Cyril organizes at the end of the session, 10 minutes of upper body work, um, 10 minutes of lower body work, always within the academy. But after 16, it can be more specific depending on your your body type and your um, injuries or, or weaknesses. Uh, we have a question from uh, Ahmed Ridi. One second, Ahmed. Go ahead, the floor is yours. Uh, hi, coach. Hey. You have a question. How Go. many hours we need to train and play today, every day? Good, good question. Uh, much less than you think. Meaning that at the academy, if you train three times a week, it's very good at your age. Okay. Of course, you can play a bit with your brothers outside with your friends, but three is not the amount of work that's important. Amount of training is the quality. So you, you can train if you can train for four hours and do something not good it's better to do one hour and 15 at the PSG Academy of focus work 
two times, three times a week to make you a better player because too much can make you injured, can make you maybe a bit bored of it. And uh, so it's quality, not quantity, if you understand the, the difference. So you said you had a question for Coach Ben. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to ask, like, after an injury, what's the best way to recover? So straight after injury and you, and you want to get back to football, what's, what's good football um, drills, short drills that you can do if you're injured? Uh, it depends a lot on the injury. For example, um, if you injure your, your elbow, there's plenty of stuff you can do with your feet that can keep you technically good. You can maybe do a bit of running if it's your whole leg. It's different. So it depends on the injury, but you can always do some work even when you're injured. This is why you have to listen very well what the, the doctors say. So um, if, if my ankles often get injured. When I used to play football, my ankles were jelly. They were always, I could, maybe I didn't do enough work of making them stronger before every, every session. I could have done maybe five minutes of ankle work to make it stronger. Plenty of stuff you can do. When you're completely injured, you have to, or you have to rest. Listen to the doctor because they know what you have to do for that injury. But, um, it's, it's sometimes very hard at a young age um, when you're injured to not play. But from experience, you have to listen to, uh, to the coaches and the doctors because it's better to, to not play for two weeks, maybe two months. It's hard. I know it's very hard when this is the best thing in your life is to play football. But it's better to stop that time and then come back and play for a, a long time. Well, that's all the time we have today with Ben. Thank you so much, Ben, for this insightful lecture. It's been it was uh, great. It's been amazing. It was, no, thanks for having me, Yannick. Absolutely. Uh, it was great. It was great to dis to discuss with all of you. There was many of you today, um, and hopefully we can we can do it again. Definitely, we're all looking forward to it. So we hope you stay safe, everybody as well. Keep training hard. Any messages for the, the kids, Ben? Uh, it's it's a very, very complicated season. I know, guys, uh, you, Cyril said that you've been coaching a lot, even though there's been uh, the pandemic. Sometimes you coach, you were playing with no contacts, but you're, you're doing amazing. And the passion you have for PSG is, is great. You're under great coaches, great facilities. You're in, at your age. I can see everybody's age here. You're at the best age to improve, to have fun, and keep keep doing it that way. All right. Okay, guys. So stay safe. Okay, and uh, we hope to see everyone soon. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you. Bye, bye, guys.